What's cracking everyone, Titanic Llama here, and I wanted to get this little video out to supplement the third episode of The Guide. I plan to very briefly go over how I personally tackled World 2 now that we have a good grasp on its systems and mechanics. Alright, heading into World 2 with prior knowledge of how the game plays, I had two major goals for myself, and that was to unlock both the FMJ and Chakrissy bubbles. These are the ninth bubbles in the orange and green cauldron. These bubbles are insanely good as they increase your defense and accuracy respectively. I had four characters going into World 2, so I placed one in the orange and purple cauldrons and two into the green cauldrons, as I wanted to get to Chakrissy first. I then proceeded to push to the secondary class trainer on all classes. This got me the account level for my fifth character as well as my secondary classes. My fifth character was always going to be my shaman, and this was so I could start to boost my alchemy, and I also wanted to be able to farm out logs a little bit faster. With five characters unlocked, I decided to spend the night with everyone on Sandy Pots as I wanted to push every character to at least level 50 for the talent points it would give, and it would also give me the account level for my sixth character, which was my hunter. More on him in a second. My wizard sat on the Giga Frogs map gathering the fibers and horns that I'd need, while my shaman sat on bleach logs. The reason for the bleach logs was I wanted to focus on leveling my wisdom bubble while I worked towards unlocking FMJ and Chakrissy. But aren't you pushing on a barbarian I hear you type? He needs brawn, not brains, right? Well, my young Padawan, wisdom, as you may have already guessed, is a warrior's secondary stat providing accuracy. And doing this kept me well ahead of where I needed to be with accuracy throughout World 2. Once I had gotten my wisdom bubble to around 20, I swapped to oak logs so I could start to catch up my strength bubble, and this was for two reasons. Yes, it gave my barbarian more damage, but more importantly, it gave my bowman accuracy. At this point in the game, I only really wanted or needed to push my barbarian to the boss map and my bowman to the moon moons map. Once I welcomed my hunter to the ranks, I threw him on farming green mushrooms so I could use the green mushroom caps to level up the second bubbles in the purple and orange cauldrons. I should also mention here, I focused pretty hard on the liquid cap in the pay to win tab to fuel all of my alchemy endeavors throughout World 2. Also, another thing I kind of glossed over was the sheepy companion. This is one of the mid tier companions, and its bonus makes it so every big bubble affects every character all of the time. So, as I said, if you're lucky enough to get this guy, you can forget about having to equip bubbles altogether. It was around the time that I got to Moon Moons on my Barbarian, I noticed I was close to being able to make my 7th character. So I took everyone off what they were doing, found which map gave each character the most experience using the AFK window, and then left them to farm for a day. Upon returning to the game, everyone had leveled up a handful of times which got me my 7th character and a big boost to all of their skilling efficiencies as I had a good chunk more talent points to pour into their skilling talents. Now, for my 7th character. I had planned for him to be another Barbarian, and that's exactly what he became. He got power leveled to level 50, decked out with all of the sickest fishing gear. Then I remembered that he may be level 50, but he is still a level 1 scrub fisherman, and he couldn't even equip the swanky new gold fishing rod that I just made for him. What an ungrateful proof. Though, a few fishing quests later, he could now use his shiny golden rod, and could also enter the second fishing map. This fishing hole right here is where that Barbarian has been sitting to this very day. Even as I write this script, that poor bastard is still sitting there. The only thing he has left this map for is to upgrade his gear and to level up a few times. This fishing spot has a slightly higher chance to give bloaches, and these I wanted to start stockpiling as many as I could, especially because I was getting close to having Chakrissy unlocked. Around the same time, I took my hunter off green mushrooms and had him farm out nugget cakes so I could make the enforced slasher for my barbarian and finish decking him out with all of the Amarok equips to bolster his defense. By this time, I had been in World 2 for a little over a week and my squire had progressed to mining platinum. My wizard was relieved from his chopping duties and was helping with the rare material grind as my shaman was keeping up with my timber needs and I wanted to keep my shaman in his skilling spec at all times to boost my alchemy speed. My bowman was starting to catch a respectable amount of fruit flies allowing me to push my FMJ bubble along with my second barbarian reeling in enough bloaches to level up Chakrissy enough to keep my accuracy well ahead of where it needed to be. My hunter was swapping between farming nugget cakes, glass shards and green mushroom caps as I felt I needed them. Once I hit the boss map, I stocked up on food, went in, it took about 10 to 15 minutes but I got the elephant in the room down and moved on to world 3. Even though I was in World 3 now, most of my characters stayed doing exactly what they were doing as I pushed my Barbarian into World 3, but more on that in the next episode. 
I hope this little breakdown has been helpful. Let me know in the comments if it was and if you'd like more of these quick little videos to accompany the larger ones. But with that being said, I've been Titanic Llama, you've been watching a short video, and I'm out. Peace.